Now, our top focus on Vion, tensions have flared up yet again in the West Bank. Israel launched an overnight raid in the city of Nablus, and amid the bombings, five Palestinians were killed and 20 wounded. Israeli special forces conducted the operation and described the site as a quote-unquote workshop for making weapons. Thousands turned out for the funeral procession on the same day. They carried the bodies through the streets ahead of the burial. According to local media reports, two of those killed were unarmed barbers on their way to daily chores. And the remaining three were part of the rebel group Lion's Den. One more member of the group was shot dead after cross-questioning. The towns of Nablus and Janine have been a regular target of raids. Over the past one year, many small armed resistance groups have emerged in the two cities. The Israeli army has put the Nablus governorate under siege for two weeks. Heavy restrictions have been imposed on the movement of its 420,000 residents. Soon after the attack, some Palestinian groups fired strikes throughout the Gaza Strip. ندعو الشباب الثائر في الضفة الغربية وقطاع غزة إلى التحرك والتظاهر فورا والاشتباك مع العدو في جميع نقاط التماس نصرة لأحدنا الصامدين في القدس ونابلس وعموم الضفة الغربية المحتلة now, while this was going on in the West Bank, Israeli President and U.S. Secretary of State were meeting in Washington, D.C. Antony Blinken said his country is concerned over the violence. He further urged both sides to de-escalate the situation. Violence has surged in recent months in the north of the West Bank. More than 100 Palestinian fighters and civilians have been killed only this year. According to the United Nations, this is the heaviest toll in the West Bank for nearly seven years. Now for more on this, we are being joined by correspondent Jody Cohen from Ranana. Welcome to the broadcast, Jody. I want to start with this. In the past few weeks, we have seen Israel increase its raids in northern west. What is the situation in Nablus after the latest flare-up? Right, so the situation is tense. The Israel Defense Forces say that they killed the leader of the Lion's Den terror group, as well as gunmen from that group, and it destroyed a bomb factory there. They say that they've been going into Nablus and the Northern West Bank in order to get control to rein in the terror groups. President Abbas, meanwhile, has called the latest raid a war crime. Hamas has warned of escalation and Islamic Jihad is vowing revenge. To put this into context, the violence has been ongoing since May, since the wave of terror attacks against Israeli civilians began back then. And Israel has been calling on the Palestinian Authority specifically to take back control of the Northern West Bank, which it says has become a hotbed of terror. Now, this has got potentially significant political implications for both sides. Remember that the Palestinian Authority lost control of Gaza to Hamas in 2007, and now President Abbas is weaker in the Northern West Bank as groups like the Lion's Den and Islamic Jihad get stronger. Also in Israel, too, there are political implications. So, for example, two of the three parties that say they represent the Arab-Israeli community have condemned this latest raid. Now, that could make it harder for Prime Minister Lapid to form a coalition government after the elections if they need to rely on some of their seats or votes. And Defence Minister Gantz has said that he won't sit with them and that Israel's security comes before the formation of a coalition. Right now, some local media reports are saying that among the six killed, two were unarmed barbers who were unfortunately present in the area. Have we heard any reactions from the government on this? So the government is, government is saying that the people involved in the fighting were gunmen, were firing explosives at the soldiers there, and that they were in fact going in to target this Lion's Den terror group, who they say they foiled attacks that they have been planning and attacks that they've actually carried out over the past months. Now, as you said also earlier, um, Secretary of State Blinken has urged everyone to de-escalate on all sides here. Um, he also interestingly called Herzog's visit to the U.S. 
a powerful symbol of the enduring partnership between Israel and the United States. And I think this is important because it mirrors President Abbas's recent visit to President Putin in Russia, where Abbas suggested a smaller role for the United States in any future peace talks. And the U.S., of course, expressed disappointments following that statement. Absolutely. And I was just coming to that. Uh, Biden has called, the U.S. has called the uh, meeting in Washington, D.C. as powerful. But doesn't that complicate what's happening, like the Palestinian side? I want to ask you, what is Israel expecting from Joe Biden when it comes to the, like an overview, the decades-old conflict with Palestine and Israel? I don't think that um, Israel is, is expecting um, that to be the focus of the meeting today between President Herzog and Biden. I think very, very much the priority will be looking at, on the positive side, the Lebanon gas deal and expanding the Abraham Accords. And then on the other side, also a real focus on Iran. Um, President Herzog is going to be presenting Israeli evidence of Iranian drones that have been used in Ukraine, they're saying. And also talking about Iran's nuclear program, Israel's likely to suggest a need for greater intelligence cooperation to build an international alliance and also a credible military threat to deter Iran from getting more involved in the Ukraine-Russia war and also to stop it from pursuing a nuclear bomb. So I think that's going to be Israel's focus in the meeting today between Presidents Herzog and Biden. All right. Thank you for getting us up to speed, Jody. That was our correspondent reporting from Ranana.